Well, hello, 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 everyone. How is everyone doing today? I'm doing pretty good myself, though I had a uh, little bit of frustration this morning. So I'm a remote employee, right? So everything I do for my company is I got to log in via a uh, VPN connection. Hey, Alexi, how's it going? Thanks for joining. Good to see you. Yeah, so I got to connect through VPN. Well, apparently my password expired, right? And you would think I would get an email or some type of warning that, hey, your password's going to expire in a few days. You should update it. Well, I don't get those. So I try to log in through my VPN and it's dead. Like I can't log in. So it's prompting me to change my, my password. And uh, so I try to change my password. But what's frustrating is I put in like six different passwords. It wouldn't take any of them. It wouldn't take any of them. It's because I didn't meet some weird, strange, cryptic requirement for my password. I know it was long enough. It might have been too long. I don't know. It just says minimum. It didn't say a maximum length. You're going to have the like numbers and combinations and letters and special characters and underscores and all this crazy stuff. And I got to do this like every three months. I finally found one that works, but shh, what a pain in the butt. Like changing your password every three months has already been, it's been proven not to be an effective password policy. Let me just use my password manager and create my passwords. Uh, but yeah. Fun, fun, fun. The fake Brian Lagunas. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Ionix Jr. Oh, what happened to View? I had to move on to different things. I'm all over the place. I gotta. I wish I could just focus on one thing, but I can't. I can't. I can't focus on one thing. I got that brain that always has to be doing something else. And we learned a lot about View anyway. So, a. Uh, Aside from actually trying to write a real application, I learned all the basics of Vue. What do I prefer? Vue or J Vue JS or React? Vue one million percent. One million percent. React blows. It sucks. I hate it. Well, okay, kind of strong hate it. Uh, I don't like it at all. How come? For a couple of reasons. One, it sure the hell isn't intuitive. You have to completely change the way you think about writing apps to use that approach. Okay. Uh, two, it didn't do a lot of the things that I would expect a framework to do. Like very basic stuff like navigation. Right? Solve that for me. That's a problem that needs to be solved. Uh, three, you had that whole new JSX uh syntax that you have to learn like come on really it, i don't think so honestly i don't know why it's so popular i honestly don't i have no idea why it's so popular it's really frustrating to work with and learn uh yeah and the whole so the component based approach i kind of start i can kind of understand a little better but then you start functions returning html like bleh, bleh. No, thank you. Vomit. <laughs> I don't want my function returning HTML. It's... Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, I don't like React one bit. And that was just, like, my first couple hours of working with it. I didn't even really get into, like, the real production app type problems that you would run into and how you would solve those. I have no idea. So, today... I was thinking I have to actually work on something that's not very sexy. Not at all. And actually, every developer I know hates it, but it has to be done. Can anyone guess what I'm talking about? Can anyone guess? We hate doing it. It's not. Yes, DJ. <laughs> First guess. <laughs> Documentation. 
Oh my god, it's... Oh, I hate it. I hate it. I really do not like writing documentation. Uh, but it's a necessary evil. And so, I, I don't even think I'm going to write any today. <laughs> but I have to at least start planning for it. And like, structuring it to where I can eventually uh, go write it. And so, if you've been using Prism for any decent amount of time you'll know that the documentation for Prism for WPF is non-existent. Unless you're using the old legacy docs, which are still, they're still applicable, right? Uh, but they need to be updated big time. So today, I have to actually start stubbing out the topics. Uh, think about how I'm going to structure those topics and the documentation. And uh, I don't think I'll get to writing any actual documentation today, but I'm hoping to at least stub out a lot of the topics I need done. Uh, the good news is that WPF has a ton of samples, like code samples. So that's good. Uh, the bad part is the docs really need a lot of work. Uh, actually, let me kind of show you what, we, what we're working with already. Uh, actually, you know what? My... Let me do something. Because I think... My resolution needs to be updated just to make it a little better to see. I think that's better. I think that's better. So if we go to prismlibrary.com, Smab UK, play retro games instead of documentation. That's what a real dev would do. <laughs> you know what? Actually, this is my last week of work week for the rest of the year. After this week, I am on vacation. And so I will be playing lots of games. Lots of games. Uh, first, I have to finish beating uh, Kingdom Hearts 3. Uh, I got to beat that one. And then my wife and I are going to start on... Uh, we're going we're gonna to play and beat the new Gears of War 5. And then I'm going to uh, finally open up my God of War... And uh, play that as well. And hopefully beat that before my vacation's up. I'm on vacation for like three weeks. So I have plenty of time to just sit in front of that TV. And do nothing except play video games. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Now I haven't decided if I'm going to continue my streams while I'm on vacation. It depends on how late I stay up. <laughs> and how tired I am. Uh, because if you play video games, you can get sucked in and... Before you know it, it's like 5 in the morning. You're like, oh my god. Holy crap, I gotta go to bed. Alexi. Yes. I do have a PS4. Uh, I am a... I am a PS4 guy. I like the PS4. Although, I do have an Xbox. And it's only because of Gears of War. My wife and I love to play Gears of War together. That's the only game I got uh, the Xbox for. But, hey... Family time, right? We're bonding. <laughs> Smab UK. I retired, so I've been setting up a coin OPS next. Oh! I need to retire. I wish I could retire. I'm tired of working. Everyone tired of working. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I could retire. Uh, tell me your, your nickname. Uh, I think I'm actually creative. Hold on. Uh... If you want to hit me up on Xbox, that is my gamer tag for Xbox. Uh, can I make that bigger? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. There we go. Hit me up on Xbox. Uh, PS4. I think it's just my name on PS4. Just get older and you can retire. I'm not sure that's how it works, man. <laughs> my dad's like 71 and his ass is still working. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I think I think for I think for PS4, I think it's just my name. I think that's what it is. All right, just get older. I wish it was that easy, huh? Uh, let's see documentation. So the problem here is that if we look under WPF. I only have legacy docs. We have a lot of changes. And actually, uh, Dan made a funny joke, Dan Siegel. He said the people who wrote the original documentation for Prism must have got paid by the word. 
Because if you scroll through these docs, I mean, it is very, very verbose. Uh, I don't even think you hit a code sample. We haven't hit a code sample yet. I mean, they must have gotten paid by the word because this stuff is crazy. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Uh, In-depth, detailed. I, I guess that could be a good thing. Uh, but yeah, we didn't even hit code in this topic. What about initializing? Now, a lot of these topics, I mean, they, they're they they're still good topics. Don't get me wrong. They're still good topics. Uh, I just think we can simplify them a lot. Uh, DJ Camperus, there's a printed book back then. Yes, there was a prism book. Uh, actually, I might. Hold on. Hold on. I think I have one. Hold on. I have one. I know I do. <laughs> I have it somewhere. I just can't find it in my bookshelf. <laughs> I might uh, I might have given it away for all I know. Uh, Dot Morton, who reads books? We just watch Twitch instead. <laughs> yeah, books. Pfft. Who reads books? Nobody reads books. Words add some weight. I tell you what. I think all they did was print out this documentation for the book because this is a very verbose documentation. So we want to simplify this a ton. Uh, and if we we'll take a couple pages out of our Xamarin, uh, our Xamarin docs where ideally what I want to do is I want to have a topic, right? Like this is create your first app, very simple, step-by-step, -step, how to walk through it, how to run it, how it works, lots of code. And then I'll have a video at the top that explains it, right? So if you're more of a video person, uh, you can watch me walk through the topic. Uh, if you're more of a person who likes to read as you go, uh, then we would have the text to back that up, right? Uh, so I kind of want to follow that pattern for this documentation for WPF. Dot Morton. I got four pounds worth of words just about garbage collection. <laughs> yeah, well, I think the, uh, the WPF Prism book was about 10 pounds. Because uh, this stuff, look at this. Implementing MVVM. Look at this. Holy crap. Look at that. That is nuts. That is nuts. Oh, but we show you how to implement I notify property change. <laughs> yeah, we're going to fix this. Uh, we're going to simplify this a lot. And we've already started pulling out a lot of the very common topics like commanding. Right, we look at commanding. Uh, we have a brief intro. Here's a video. Code. Brief exclamation. Code. Right. Uh, another sample. We have some notes here. Uh, but yeah, so that's kind of what we want to do. Observe property. Observe can execute. Very simple, task based. Go to composite commands. So these topics here, they apply to all platforms. This is basically all the functionality that's in the Prism.core NuGet package. Event aggregation. Right, a view model locator, all this great stuff. So we've pulled out those those common topics uh, at a higher level, and now we have these platform specific topics that we want to get into. And actually, this dependency injection one, this probably has to be moved up. Looking at this, uh, because this applies to this applies to all. Yeah, this applies to all uh, supported platforms as well. So we'll need to rearrange some of this, but Don Morton, it's called Pro.net Memory Management, over a thousand pages worth. Recommended, but then again, who reads books? I don't read books. I don't read books at all. <laughs> uh, I'm just lazy. I can't help it. Okay. So first steps first. I need to open up my... Uh, my GitHub for desktop and go to Prism documentation. And I need to get. Yes, it's been a while since I've done a get on that repo because we've actually been doing a lot of uh, a lot of work here. Dan's been doing a lot of work, so it's making me look bad. I got to jump in there and get to work. 
Exactly, Dot Morton. We need people to read code. That's what I read. I read code. All right, so I have all the latest and greatest. Let's show and explore. So we're going to docs, WPF. Let me minimize this. Uh, let's open this in code and look at our current table of contents. And it's just legacy. How's that? How is that a uh, screen resolution? Everyone see that code? Okay, I can zoom in a little if necessary. All right. So what I'm gonna do is we need to start thinking about our table of contents. What this is gonna look like. So let me dock this over here. And okay, where's? Oh man. Here we go. Okay, that's not a good view. I'm not gonna like that at all. That's not gonna work for me. All right, so if we're getting started with WPF, yeah, that's the, I don't like that. Hey, Lily! Lily Hazel, good morning to you. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Today, you're joining us for some a lot of fun stuff. I mean, it's so much fun. It's You're not going to be able to handle it. It's so much fun. What are we doing? Planning out documentation. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, it's not fun. It's not sexy, but it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Okay, so some topics that I know we have to talk about. We have to talk about navigation. This is the easiest to start with because uh, it's it, it's a one of the main concepts in Prism, and so some of the things we have to talk about. Uh, so actually, we actually have this. We have view composition, right? Uh, view composition of view composition. There's a view discovery. And we have a view injection. Uh, so view discovery is all about, I have no control. Uh, this is using the register. I think it's register view with region. Something like that. I don't ever, I don't use this a lot. So I, I don't remember it off the top of my head. So view discovery talks about using the region manager dot register view with a region a method where the view is automatically discovered, created, and injected into the region, right? Uh, then you have view injection, where it's, you know you're doing region dot add. You're you're like manually controlling and injecting and removing uh, views into that region. Then we have region navigation. This is a different topic altogether. And so I think it's important that before region navigation, we do touch on view composition. Uh, and I don't know if I'm going to call it view composition or not, but that's what I'm going to go with for now. I might change the title. Uh, Alexi, do you have a dog picture on the avatar in PS4? I don't remember. I normally don't do a lot of online. I just, I think I do actually. Oh wait, no, that's my Netflix. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. Let me just look real quick. Uh, what is it? PS4 online login. Is that my PlayStation? Is that what it is? Oh, I don't have it in my, oh crap. I don't even have it in my last pass. Shows you the last time I logged into this thing. Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to look, Alexi. I have no idea. Okay, so view composition, view discovery, view injection. Then we have region navigation. So this is region injection, if you will, right? Uh, this is all about injecting, manually injecting, or the automatically discovery of views that we inject them into the regions. Then we have region navigation. This is actually a navigation framework. Uh, and with this, what do we have? Uh, we can kind of look at navigation here. 
take some of the topics. I don't care about state-based navigation. This, I don't care about that. That's just changing data. I don't really consider that navigation. Okay. Uh, I'm going to come down to view-based navigation. Look, this is so much mess. Okay. We definitely have regions. Region adapters. Uh, so maybe we should start with basic re region navigation. Right? And that's going to cover the request navigate. Uh, but before you could do that... Okay, I'm not going to go with that detail just yet. Let's just get the high-level stuff. So we need basic re region navigation. We need uh, participating in navigation. This is the uh, I navigation aware stuff. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. I can't spell. Oh, my God. Come on. I navigation aware. Uh, then we have... What do we have? Bef participating... I mean, that could be... Actually, that could be passing parameters. Oh. It can't be really passing... Because iNavigationAware does a couple of things. It has is navigation target, which controls if you're navigating to a new instance of a, of a control or if you're going to navigate to the same instance. So I'm not sure participating in navigation is a good name for that. Uh, okay. Maybe she passing parameters. Okay. And then uh, somewhere we have to do controlling your, your target instance. Like we're navigating to a specific instance or you're navigating to a new instance. Uh, crap. Let me just do a to be determined. Uh, is navigation target. Then we do have confirming navigation. All right, we got that. Uh, actually, let's look at Xamarin Forms. It's similar. Uh, navigation. Yep, okay, working with XAML navigation, blah, blah, blah. Okay, confirming, passing, navigation basics. Kind of what I have here, basic navigation, basic region navigation, passing parameters, confirming navigation. This is more, I'm gonna put that down here. That might be more advanced. Okay, so let me go to view-based. Uh, basic region navigation, we have that. View and view model participation. This is what I'm calling passing parameters because I think that topic makes more sense. However, see, this is that is navigation target I was talking about. This is a special... Honestly, I wish this was not on this interface. But it is what it is. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. And I can read... Ooh, I read your member lifetime. That's another... Oh, that's another thing. That actually... Oh, where's my notepad? That's actually a good topic. I don't know where it goes yet. Don't know where that goes yet. Okay. We're talking about that. I read your map. Yeah, I know what I read. Okay. Passing parameters during navigation. Navigating to existing views. Maybe that's what the topic should be. Right? Right there. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Lily, I totally zoned out. What are we working on? <laughs> I am writing documentation. I am, I am, uh, I'm way behind <laughs> on, uh, on documentation. So this is one of those necessary, boring things that every developer should be doing uh, as we should be writing docs. I know we hate to do it. We hate to do it, but we got to do it. 
So this is the exciting life of a developer. <laughs> Docs. Yep, it is. It's boring. Confirming canceling navigation. Yeah, we have that. Uh, maybe I should rearrange this. Like that. I still don't know where this is going to go. Don't know where that's going. Uh, then, oh, and we have a navigation journal. That is pretty cool. Uh, the navigation journal is essentially replicating the behavior that a browser gives you with go back, go forward, can go back, can go forward, right? That kind of stuff. Uh, and yeah, we have an opting out of the navigation journal. Who cares? See, this shouldn't even be in here. Using the WPF navigation framework. Oh, well, the WPF frame sucks butt. So, I would never recommend anyone use that horrible thing. Hey, AGR! Good to see ya! Uh, the region navigation sequence. Actually, that's... This is... This is actually good documentation on how this works. So I need to make sure that I put this, uh, this graphic in the navigation topic. Hey, Merry Christmas to you. It's almost time, isn't it? It's about that time of year. Happy holidays. Happy to non -don wait, happy non-denominational winter season, everyone. <laughs> okay, so I think I think that's a good AGR. This will be my last stream here before I go on vacation. So this is my last week. Uh, Thursday will be my last stream before I go on vacation. However, I may still stream during my vacation. I don't know. I haven't decided. Lily, I like that. Uh, oh, I like that. I've been uh, making holiday-themed desktop backgrounds, and I like non-denominational winter season. <laughs> yep. And Don Morton points out it's summer for half the world. Happy non-denominational, non-denominational season holiday. <laughs> How ridiculous can we make that? And uh, Lily, I, I think Dot Morton just increased the amount of text you have on your desktop backgrounds now. <laughs> yes, Morton, that was a challenge. I want to see how crazy you can make a season greeting be. Highly inclusive gre season greeting. Okay? I want everyone in there. Don't leave anybody out. All right, so we're not going to talk about this uh, I will put this probably in the intro when we're talking about the the region navigation this needs to be at the very beginning like this is how it works right happy everything everyone <laughs> it's supposed to be complicated Morton it's supposed to be complicated <laughs> oh my gosh actually I'm peeking on my mic does my sound does my sound okay I might need to turn down my... Oh, wow. Yeah, that's loud. Maybe I should back that up. Sound is fine. Weird. Okay, my mic has me, like, peaking. I mean, it's, like, really, really loud. I guess I'll see in post-production. Okay. So, I think... I'm not sure where I'm going to put this... But this is a good start for the region navigation. Uh, communication, this is all about... Oh, well, you know what? I was going to say this is about commanding and stuff, but we actually have region context in here as well. Huh. Solution commanding, yeah. See, this is delete command, composite command. We already have topics for that. However, a... Unknown, a very unknown or not well-known feature of Prism for WPF is the region context. Uh, I'm not sure what the topic's going to be on that, but I need to put something about 
the region context. Something has to be in there about that. I don't know where it's going to go, but we... This, ha this has to do with sharing uh, context between a parent and child region or view, right? All right. Shared services. Okay, this is, yeah, this is just basic stuff. Event aggregation, where you already have that topic covered. That is done. Pub sub event. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, all that's done. Unsubscribing. Yep, okay. That's good. Uh, so composing the UI, what's under here? Oh, you know what? Actually, we have the concept of modules that we need to talk about. And within this, we have, you know, module catalogs and different types of module catalogs. Uh, basically code based, config file, XAML file, directory, uh, custom. Okay, so... Yeah, well, shell. Yeah, we do have some main concepts. That is a main concept we have to talk about. I have to talk about the shell, what that is. Okay, let's just talk about design patterns. Oh, behaviors, UI triggers, actions, interactivity. Oh, yeah. We got to talk about interactivity as well. This is the uh, triggers slash behaviors. However, since I am on the Microsoft WPF XAML behaviors team, I actually got the Prism event to command into the official Microsoft <laughs> WPF Behaviors project. So, yeah. I may be able to actually remove that from Prism now because it's it's official. It's Everyone gets it now. And I don't have to maintain that code. <laughs> One of the benefits of being on the team. Uh, data binding, regions. Okay. You know what? Oh, yeah, we got... Yeah, AGR, can't believe that was missed from WPF either. That's just one of those necessi necessities, right? So, I, you know what? We're definitely going to have to have an extending. Because we could do some really advanced stuff. Uh, we're going to have to talk about the region manager here. Because that's where all the, faint, the fun... Navigation stuff happens. Uh, we might, you know, I think we might need an advanced topic. Because, you know, we have region adapters, region behaviors. Uh, I don't know if that would be advanced or extending. I don't know yet. I don't know. Let's, let's just do advanced for now. You know, creating custom region adapters, things like that. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's look through here. Initializing. So actually, another topic when we talk about uh, getting started slash, you know, the first app is that we have two different approaches to creating a prism map right now. We have the legacy bootstrapper. And then we have the new uh, prism application class. So, and when we do this, we might need to talk about the initialization order. We'll have to talk about that. And so we can reuse a lot of this uh, content here. I put anything legacy somewhere deep down. Yeah, well, the thing is, is 
So the prism application is definitely the recommended approach for sure. However, the bootstrapper is is still useful in certain scenarios to where maybe you're writing an extension to a Visual Studio extension or something that doesn't have an application associated with it. This this the bootstrapper's marked legacy. I even marked it obsolete, but it's not going anywhere. I'm never removing it. It's staying there forever. What may happen is in a year or so, I may refactor it to where the API is the same as the Prism application. Uh, so this would be your headless uh, implementation, and then this would be when you have an actual application. Uh, and if you look, we do have this legacy Prism 6 uh, topic here. So this is where all the legacy documentation already exists. So, I don't know, maybe we do just leave it down here. Maybe we do just leave it there. Creating the shell, key decisions, core scenarios. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Creating, configuring module catalog. See, like, another thing. Oh, yeah. So, the reason I marked it obsolete, so AGR is uh, saying that it shouldn't be obsolete then. Well, the reason I'm marking it obsolete is to force people to the new Prism application, right? So I'm scaring them. Like, literally, I'm like, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm purposely scaring them to use the new Prism application uh, to get them to move off. But it's still useful in those scenarios where it, it works in a headless, uh, headless option, right? But I'm not removing it. I'm not really removing it. I'm just telling people I am. <laughs> <laughs> and uh what was that bassylicious oh bassy bassy i'm a fisherman i like to go bass fishing but i'm a, I, I i play the guitar too so maybe you play the bass so you could be bassy or you could be bassy i don't know you tell me bass like the fish bass like the instrument thanks for the follow Okay, let's see. Uh, and you know another thing I'm going to get away from? It's this iLogger facade. I don't really like the way this has been positioned in Prism because there's a misconception that you would use the logger facade as your logging interface. Well, that's not really the case. I don't like how that was positioned here. Mason talks code. Thanks for the follow. The way it was positioned is, yeah, you're going to implement this interface and you're going to inject this into all your view models or services or whatever uh, to do your logging. No, don't do that, actually. Uh, the whole purpose of this iLogger facade was to give developers the ability to tap into the internal workings of Prism. So we log things as Prism is initialized and as Prism is doing things in your app. And we use the iLogger facade to do that. And so we give you the option to create an adapter for your logging system, like in this case, they're saying the enterprise logging library. Uh, but this would allow you to tap into Prism's logging mechanism. But we don't want you to actually use this everywhere. Don't do that. Use your your logger use your logger okay uh, like the fish comes from my nickname bassy like the fish and from all the swimming while surfing although i do play bass and the drums as well <laughs> well bassylicious thanks for the clarification i too am a huge bass fisherman i grew up in the south and that is what you do in the south you fish for bass small mouth large mouth doesn't matter Sand bass, doesn't matter. Okay, striped bass, that's another good one. That's another good one. Those suckers get big and boy, do they fight. Okay, this is something else I don't have to worry about here. This could be an advanced topic. MEF is no longer a thing for Prism because it is not, I repeat, MEF is not a DI container. So it has been dropped. There is no support for MEF and PRISM anymore. Okay, I'll see what else do we have? 
Bassy comes from sea bass. So yeah. <laughs> Meth, no longer a thing. That's right. Not for Prism, it's not. Not for Prism. The problem was the intentions were good when the team <laughs> Martin <laughs> Martin said like like UWP. <laughs> UWP is not a thing. <laughs> oh Morton. You and I think too much alike, I swear. It's scary. No more Vue.js? No, not today. Today I actually have to uh, I have to get some work done. I have to I have to start working on some documentation for Prism for WPF, so I'm planning it out right now. Morton says he's kidding. We'll make a believer in you. Win UI is exciting. Okay, Win UI. Win UI is exciting. I do like that. Uh, UWP. No, not so much. The file new for UWP app makes you want to vomit. It's ridiculous. It's pathetic. Whoever wrote that said, oh, this is a great idea. WPF developers are going to love this. Should be fired. Yeah. Duplicis, dup, dup, duplicis, duplicis, doublicis. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have to work sometimes. For Khan, hey, good to see you. Edward, I'll go with Edward. <laughs> oh, it's fun trying to say names sometimes. HGR hasn't been keeping up with the new eye, so we're going to color him skeptical. Will do. It's got potential, though. It's got potential. All right, so let's go ahead. I think I have a... Well, you know what? Another thing I could do... Hold on. This might be uh, confidential, so let me look through this real quick. Okay. Oh, no. Are you kidding me? Oh, that's right. I changed my password. Ugh. <sighs> Hold on, let me log in. It's ridiculous. What was my password? Because I have a lot of training material that I've given for uh, given for Prism. Lily, gonna head out. Hey, I understand. Documentation is not the most exciting thing to watch. <laughs> have a great day. Uh, I have a ton of document, or ton of a ton of a ton of training material that I've done in the past. So I'll like, for example, I went to Canon in Japan, uh, did some on-site training for them, and so we go through these. I could go through these topics, and uh, Morton, I'm just here to distract Brian. <laughs> it's not you, it's me, Lily. <laughs> Yeah, so I have a whole bunch of slides about uh, Prism training. So if I can go through these, I could probably... Yeah, well, building blocks are pretty good to know. This might need to be an introduction. That should probably be in an intro. Intro somewhere, for sure. So let's have an intro. And this is where we'll talk about uh, high-level overview... And uh, mention the building blocks. Yeah, that'd be good to have right there. That was my day one training. Oh, uh, man, these slides bring back memories. Oh, my goodness. Talking about how Prism takes your app from this crap to this awesomeness. Your typical monolithic huge application design. And how you break up a prism map into nice modules, each project very clean and organized. And I should go through this. Ah, see, boot, this is old. Can't use Bootstrapper anymore. Uh, yep. Okay, don't care about that. We've got to talk about the shell regions. That's navigation. We have that. So after we talk about the shell. And actually, I don't know if the shell has its own topic or not. That that might go... That might actually fit under the Prism application here. 
on your creating your first app. So this is a question mark. I don't know if that's a topic or not, actually. Uh, we definitely have to talk about the region name. And see, this is what gets a little confusing because you have to understand the region manager to talk about region navigation. So maybe under region navigation, we, we talk about the region manager first and then we talk about basic region navigation. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I already have some code snippets here. Oh, and I have this uh, animation. What the heck is that? That kind of sucks. Uh, then we have region adapters. This is more along of how it actually works. The supported region. Actually, I should refer to the slide deck when I write these docs. Creating a custom region adapter. Okay, that should definitely be an advanced here. Yes, for Khan, we are we are finally planning out and going to start writing documentation for Prism for WPF. Uh, the current doc is way outdated. It targets Prism six, uh, so we want to improve this and we want to make it easier to follow and easier to read. So I am trying to plan that out. I'm not sure if that should be. Uh, I'm not sure about this. I have a question. Is it possible to pass dialogue parameters, which is not a string? Yes. It's possible to pass dialogue parameters that are not a string. Just pass the object. If you look at the API, you'll actually see that the key is a string, but the actual value is an object. So you can pass anything you want. Okay. So I do have code for a custom region adapter that I can use. That's good. You got to register that. That's fine. We're talking about views. These are good slides. I can't believe I haven't actually referred to these in a while. View composition. Yep. View discovery, view injection. We talked about this. View discovery. Yeah. AGR, I believe you can create your own object that implements idolic parameters as well. Uh, you can, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's not necessary. Edward, gotta go. I have a client to call. Good luck. Hopefully that results in money for you. Okay, so we do have that. We have view injection. So yes, there's view discovery, view injection. And then we talk about modules. That's interesting. So I have modules further up. Well, I guess the order doesn't really matter right now. But registering, module lifetime. Hey, these are actually, I could probably copy and paste a lot of these graphics, these are actually really good. Okay, that was day one. It's not bad. What? AGR. It's good if you're passing around common information. You get away from the magic string values that a view model needs to know. Yeah, we can use an attached property instead. Or uh, an attached method or whatever. Uh... Extension method. That's what I was thinking about. You can just use an extension method. You know, parameters dot get first name, set last name. Like you could do that instead, instead of creating a separate object to pass around and having to cast back and forth. That would suck. Uh, I would rather do an extension method instead. That way I'm not changing the interface when I'm passing around and have to worry about casting things back and forth. That's just causing more work than having a string, which you could put in a constant anyways. Okay, day two training. Let's look at this bad boy. Let's make sure I'm covering all my topics. We already have topics for commanding 
Event aggregation. Uh, region context we added. I'm not sure where it belongs. Uh, so this is all covered. That's all covered. Don't have to worry about that. That's good. Ooh, I active aware. That. I might have to have a topic for tabs. Oh, I'm not sure. I might come back to that one. Let me note that down first. Not sure about that one. I don't know where that where that lives. Don't know where that lives. <laughs> Lily, ah, I'm actually back for a bit. <laughs> well, that was fast. <laughs> Just couldn't stay away from this great documentation, could you? It's keeping you on the edge of your seat. <laughs> So I active aware. Oh man, these are great. I can't, I don't even remember doing these slides, but these are beautiful slides. I must have spent a lot of time on these. <laughs> yeah, Lily, you're addicted to super exciting documentation stream. Self back pat. Pop, 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 pop. Oh, actually, you know. I don't know why you just reminded me, but I think I actually created my first, like, emote. I'm not sure if I did it right. Lily, you need to change your stream title to Let's Document. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot to update my title. Oh, you're right. I think it's too late. Let's Document. Oh, I totally forgot. Thanks for reminding me. <laughs> oh man, there's just so many things you got to do to set up for a for a stream. Ah, uh, okay. So what I was saying, yeah, I am an amateur, Morton. I am an amateur. Uh, did I submit my emote? You have to submit for it to be approved. Uh, hold on. Where is? Okay, I'm gonna try something. Let me, how do I use it? I think I called it, I think it's Brian L2 face. No, not 2D. Brian L2 face. Well, crap. Okay, hold on. Let me, let me look real quick. Let, let me look real quick. How do I get... Preferences? Affiliate, I think. Emotes. Okay. See, I have... I have oh, pending! You're right, Lily. It's pending. I don't know... You've already uploaded an emote. Well, what's for subscription? Okay, I don't know what this. Between two days to four weeks, depending. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? That's ridiculous. Oh well. But yeah. And I can't change the prefix either. That kind of blows. So it's Brian L2. I hate that. But yeah, so I'm trying to, I got my, my own little emote there for the first time. <laughs> I am an amateur. Oh, partners can. Oh, okay, Lily. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not ever going to be a partner. I can't, I can't stream that much. I got a day job. <laughs> I got a very demanding day job, actually. Yeah, Lily says it's because someone with the letter Brian L already got affiliated before me, which why I have two. Yeah. <laughs> Documentation is hard. I wouldn't want to do it all day. I'm not doing this all day. Uh, let's see here. Where was I on my slides? Really? 
Lily says she actually loves creating documentation. Well, you can help me with documentation then. <laughs> How about that? Uh, yeah, you know what? I could hire you. I have, uh, I'll take whatever money I get from my uh, GitHub sponsors, which is like $10 a month right now, and I can pay you. <laughs> yeah, nice deal. I'm telling you. Okay, so we already talked about event aggregator. I have a topic on that already. I already have a topic on... Man, these are really good slides. I kind of want to update my documentation to include these. Okay, I'm, I'm, this is all covered. This is all covered. Navigation. Okay. We talk about view, view model participation, passing parameters. Uh... Lily, ha ha ha. Dang, past me was awesome in creating slides. <laughs> yeah, like, this is uh, pretty impressive. You could tell I put a lot of effort into this. Well, I was giving this training to Canon, so I probably thought to myself, I better make this look really professional. What's that? Nov Dice? Nov Dice? Nov Diaz? Sorry, I butchered that. I'm really bad at those names. Thanks for the follow. Thanks for joining. Prepare to have your mind blown with awesome documentation. <laughs> because that's what we're working on today. We're documenting. <laughs> so we definitely have to talk about registering. Okay, I'm not at this level yet. I need high level topics. Uh, well, you know what? View and view model participation. Maybe I do need that. I think this is... I think this is a topic separate from passing parameters. Yeah, because this, yes, decide when to create a new view view model or use an existing, because that actually is where this comes in. Uh, well, no, not that. This. That's where that can come into view or come into topic. Oh man, I don't know what flows better. Crap. Well, I guess, you know, once I get these kind of put out, I can move them around. Uh, but I think the way I think, I think the way my slides have, it makes sense. If anything, if anything, the topic should be right under that. All right, what else do we got? What else do we got? Yeah, see this? Yeah. There's navigation target. Then we go to passing parameters. I think when I give the training, I, I gave a lot of thought to it, and this makes it logical sense here i like slide 68 okay morton let's take a look at 68 <laughs> yeah everyone likes that slide everyone likes that slide okay and what's great about these slides actually i'm glad i looked at these because even though i have my high level topics here i can get my my subtopics right the content of those high level topics here. And even the code snippets, I could just use the code snippets as well. Except I probably don't want to show this code. You would never use this in a real application. What, where's the most difficult topic of scope? Re oh! Wow, I can't believe I didn't even think about that. Great point for Khan. That is a great point. That is probably an advanced topic for sure. That is definitely 
an advanced topic, but I totally forgot about scoped regions. Uh, I probably would have got there eventually, going through my slides. So, oh, actually, I... Automatically remove... I reach member lifetime. So controlling the life... Okay. This came after... So, okay, this... Came right after that. Controlling view lifetime. Okay. And then the navigation journal. Okay. All right. So I'll close that one. Oh, I know. I know, I know. I changed my password. Now I'm getting prompted for everything. Uh, but yeah, thanks for bringing up that scoped regions because that is a common topic, but a very advanced topic as well. Okay, day three. This was all about interactivity. Okay. So I have interactivity down here already. Now I'm not sure... I talked about modules early on. Because modules are easy. They really are. I haven't decided where I'm going to put that. But we definitely have interactivity. We could talk about pop-ups. Uh, oh, you know what? I also have a new dialogue service. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where that's going, though. I really don't know where I'm going to put that yet. It could go under a dialogues topic. Uh, but no, I don't want to... Don't know. Don't know. Question mark. But I have to talk about it. That's a new feature, by the way. That's a new feature. Okay, interaction request, showing pop-ups. Yeah, see, this pop-up here, I'm getting this pop-up window action, I'm getting rid of, because this thing is overly complicated. And it's being replaced with that new dialogue service that I created. Okay, notifications. Yeah, don't care about that. We ain't, I, ain't, I don't even like I'm going to talk about that, actually. I might leave that out. Yeah, see, this is the simple dialogue service here. This is this is how easy it is. Why would you ever not use this? Okay, so command to event to command. Oh, invoke command action, sorry. Invoke command action. <clears throat> Which this invoke command action is now in the WPF uh, behaviors. Uh, though, I can't remember if it's called invoke command action or event to command. I forgot what it's called. And then we have the advanced topics. So maybe advanced. Oh. So under advanced, I have like... I have scenarios like mastering and tab control, showing multiple shells, loading... I'm not sure this belongs in the documentation. I'll have to think about that. But you know what? I think we're at a point to where I can actually start creating some of these these docs and committing them to GitHub and stubbing these things out to where I can actually start writing the content. So let's start doing that. Where is... Where's my GitHub? All right. We're going to show an explorer. Docs, WPF. Oh, wait, I should have this open already. Did I close it? No, I didn't. Okay, that's going to go at the bottom for sure. All right, so we're going to go with the introduction. Man, I cannot spell, I swear. HRF. And we need an HRF. Detonated. What am I up to? 
I am working on documentation. Woohoo! Good times. Good times. One of those ugly, boring necessities that we have to do. So what I'm doing now is so I, I've went through the process of identifying some of the major topics that I want to talk about. Uh, and we're updating the PRISM documentation. So if you go to it's the PRISM website and look at the docs, you can see that WPF doesn't have any any current documentation. It's all legacy stuff. So we want to change that. And so I've already identified the main concepts. So now I'm going to create those topics. And then I can start stubbing out the content of those topics. And what I'm hoping is for the most part, based on some past training I've done, I just looked at some slides that I did in the past. Uh, I can do a lot of copy and paste. Honestly, that's what I'm hoping I can do. Uh, and just simplify the documentation as well. <laughs> Lily, it's riveting. <laughs> Edge of your seat content here, folks. Who finds typos first? Oh, everything I type is a typo for sure. All right, so I'm just going to, hey, why did I do that? So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, let's just start here. Okay, so this one will be, well, she was getting started to create your first app. What did I do for, for Xamarin? I said create your first app. Uh, sure. Yeah, I probably shouldn't even have that there. Rami, Ramesh, iDollog service could be under a services section. I could, but I'd hate to have just one. You know, I'd hate to have just one. Though, I mean, technically there are quite a number of services in Prism. Uh, you just use them without knowing it. Yeah. Morton makes a good point. This should probably just be called getting started. Right? Because the other is implied. Vermilion River. Hey, Brian. Are there examples of using Prism with UWP apps? No, because Prism does not support UWP anymore. Yes. <laughs> Morton. I don't just hate the UWP file dialog. I hate, I don't like UWP in general as it sits today. Okay, so we'll do, and actually under getting started, Shell would probably go under getting started, actually. That is not a, a topic of its own. We have view composition, region navigation. Vermilion River, me either. To be fair, I much prefer WPF, although I do like the XBind mechanics. Meh, XBind is okay. It's one of those things that you wish for in uh, WPF. Actually, no, they didn't bring it. I thought they brought it to the WPF. Maybe they didn't. I don't remember. Uh, region context, I'm not sure where this belongs yet. I'm not sure where region context belongs yet. AGR, it isn't in WPF. Okay. I'm in so many platforms now, I just can't remember what's what anymore. It's, the context switching is killing me. I'm just going to do modules. Uh, interactivity. Sure, though I might... I might get rid of that one. Maybe. Maybe. I'll, I'll look into it. I'll look into it, but for now, I'll keep it. Uh, so we got introduction, getting started, view composition, 
region navigation. This is going to be its own own topic here. Like I'm gonna have a subtopic under there, uh, kind of like this, right? It's gonna be like this, except it's gonna be called uh, navigation slash TLC. Okay. Modules, interactivity. This will probably have to be its own thing as well. Uh, modules could probably be one topic. View composition will have to be its own subtopic here. Yeah, I should do this. We'll do region navigation. Modules could be its own topic. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get getting started as its own topic. So now... We have to do this. Uh, view composition. Uh, what I think region dash navigation. Oh, misspelled it. See there. Every time, every time. Uh, interactivity, which I'm still not 100% sure I want to do this one. But what the heck. Okay. Uh. For now, just for now, just for now, I'll have it in its own. Whoops. Well, that didn't work. Uh, and then we'll get rid of this. Okay, that looks pretty good so far. Uh, another question you may have that you haven't asked, but I'm going to tell you is you're saying, well, Brian, you're writing this documentation. I don't quite understand what you're doing. You're, you're in this YML file called TOC, which I assume stands for table of contents. You would be correct. Uh, but what exactly are you doing for documentation? Well, first off, our documentation is written in markdown files. Okay. So if I open this with code. You can see this is just standard markdown uh, with our code snippets and everything. And yes, Lily, markdown is awesome for documentation. And you have no, <laughs> no clue what we're doing. Well, we are actually using uh, DocFX for our documentation system. So if you haven't heard of DocFX, uh, DocFX is what Microsoft uses for its documentation on its website. So this is Microsoft's documentation generator. It's called DocFX, open source, free. Uh, to be honest, their, their docs on their DocFX aren't great. Uh, so I help where I can, uh, but they kind of walk you through, you know, what it is, how you, how you install it, uh, how you kind of set it up, how you walk through your topics, Right, creating a simple, a simple documentation website, uh, the content, uh, templates, how you can style it, extensibility. Uh, there's actually, well, hold on, uh, multiple language support. There is a customize your website. I'm looking for something different though. Okay, that's not, this is API doc generation. So docfx not only can handle topic-based documentation, but it can also generate your API documentation as well. And so that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for DocFX flavored markdown, I think is what I'm looking for. Yeah, so it shows you all the tags that are supported by DocFX and some special ones. So for example, if you come down to video, Guess who submitted that documentation? Uh, 
Improvement. <laughs> meh, meh. It was me. <laughs> Lucky guess. Lucky guess. You had no idea it was me. You just guessed. Oh, yeah. So, you know, DocFX supports special tags. In this case, there's a video tag that was not documented. Uh, and it was kind of confusing on how, on how you would implement it. Uh, so... As a good open source contributor, I uh, updated their documentation to uh, to help them out there. And what's also cool is you can create your own special tags in C Sharp. So you create a project in C Sharp. Uh, I, I wonder if... I don't want to get too far off what we're doing here. Uh, but you can essentially process each document, each topic or MD file as it comes in and do something custom. And so I've actually created a number of these custom markup tags uh, to use. But maybe that's a, a stream for another day. Maybe I should actually stream setting up DocFX, installing it, creating docs, uh, because it's actually, it's, it's kind of cool. And it's, it's a problem that every developer has is how do I write docs? What system should I use? How, how do I deploy it? Right in our case for Prism, these docs are powered by DocFX, right? But when we check into Master, we use Azure DevOps to generate all the documentation based on our changes and automatically update the website. So let's 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 kind of work on that some more. Uh, let's get back to here. So we're using DocFX. Let me get back into my WPF. I'm gonna. Copy this, paste it, because what the why the, the table of contents uh, is the file that builds this tree on the left hand side in DocFX. So that's why I am uh, creating this. However, I'm just going to keep it very simple for now, because I'm going to copy and paste this into the other. Oh, nope. Did I? I hope I didn't do that. Wrong file. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. Just one of this one. And that one. Okay. So we got that table of contents. So I'm going to do a test right now. It might break something, but I am going to test it out anyways. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to break all the things right now. Because I want to show you, hopefully. <clears throat> so I just pushed these changes to our documentation repo. That was master, by the way. I did not branch. I am a crazy man. <laughs> uh, so... I just pushed directly to master. <clears throat> now what's going to happen is if we view on GitHub, Prism library, documentation, uh, we should have a, oh, we don't have our build badge. Dang. I wish I had my build badge up there. Anywho. At least it should, yeah, add a default topic. So if you go under WPF, here's the new files. Here's the new folder. Uh, there is a build going on right now that is going to update when it's done. It's going to update this tree on our website. And the website itself, which is cool, if you go to the repo, is the prismlibrary.github.io. It's another repo. So it's going to bundle up. It's going to build all the HTML based on the documentation topics that we create. It's going to bundle that all that up, send it to this repo, and this repo is going to update the website. <clears throat> it's a pretty cool process. Maybe I should cover that uh, in the next stream. Should start from the beginning. Should start from the very beginning. Okay. So now what I want to do... Where is code? Right there. And... So introduction, getting started, view composition. 
So view composition, this one. <clears throat> this has view discovery. Actually, hold on. Maybe this doesn't have to be two different topics. Maybe view comp maybe I don't need a table of contents for this one. I might not need that actually. Yeah. Okay, let's start creating files here. Let's start with uh, introduction.md. See, that's all we do. So the name of the table of contents, this is going to represent, let me bring up the website. This is going to represent what you see here, right? So the name of this is WPF. The name of that is Legacy Prism 6. So if we open this back up, you can see Legacy Prism 6. Then the href is what actually points to the to the topic. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, legacy.toc. So if we go into Legacy and look at this TOC, you can see it's pointing to the other topics, right? I hope that makes sense. It's, it's actually really simple. Caffeined. I tried to get Telerec to get on board with updating their Prism examples. Submitted some custom region adapters for some of their controls too. Oh, let's take a look. Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Outdated. Oh, look at Did you find it possible to share the adapter so we don't have to do the work? And you're like, sure. Here we go. You can have what I did. Awesome. <clears throat> nice. Thank you. Your community appreciates that, Caffeine. That's awesome. All right, let's add. Actually, let's do this. Uh, whoops, getting started. Getting started. Uh, view dash composition. This should actually be one topic. Now region navigation is legit. Like it has a lot of topics it needs to, to handle. So that will remain the same. Uh, modules. Uh, interactivity. I'm not sure about that one, honestly, but we'll leave it. I dialogue service. Maybe I should just say dialogue service. So I'm trying to think of SEO, right? <clears throat> it's advanced legacy. Okay. So now let me add some titles to this. Actually, maybe that shouldn't be I. Di Let's just be called dialogue service with a space. Human readable. Human readable. Okay, what else? Uh, so all I'm doing is just stubbing out the headers for all of these topics.
Okay, and here uh, we got view discovery and view injection. I already know those. I already know those need to be talked about. Okay, got that, got that. I think I got all these. Now let's go to, where are we going? Where should we go? Yeah, this one, this one I'm getting rid of. I don't think I need that. So I'm getting rid of that. Uh, we'll go to interactivity. No, I won't go because I don't know if I'm keeping this. Don't know if I'm keeping that. So we will go to region navigation. Oh, show. <laughs> Lily, you're so casual about deleting things. Yes. I just delete. I don't second guess. Don't second guess myself. I just do. If I make a mistake, I can ask for forgiveness later. That's the way I look at it. <laughs> Maniac. I'm a crazy man. Okay. Region navigation. This is where... Okay, did I stub up first... Let me make sure. All these are stubbed out. Okay, those look good. So while... Nah, I'll keep going. Actually, I'm curious. Did this update yet? No, not yet. Oh, I'm doing a... Hold on. Please, prism... Okay, that hasn't built yet. Hasn't finished building yet. That's okay. Back to writing code. Oh, well, not code, writing docs. So I need this up. Let me grab one of these modules, sure. Okay, and this one was basic region navigation. Basic region navigation. Let's go view. Oh, wait a minute. Participation. You know what? Actually, let me get rid of that. I want to make my copy-paste life a little easier on myself. So I'm just going to start copying. Paste. This is going to be navigating. No, 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 no. No, not that. I think I said I wasn't doing that. Maybe. We'll see. I'll leave it here just in case. Because I'm not sure if I'm going to put I is navigation target inside of view view model participation or not. I might want to call that out specifically because if you're new to Prism and you're just reading topics, you might want to see that topic explicitly pointed out and not buried inside of another topic. This might be something that should be you know, more visible. So now we have passing parameters. Oops. We have con yeah, confirming navigation. And the reason I'm naming these the way I am is because these will turn into an HTML file. And so if you go to the website, for example, and I click on Xamarin Forms, uh, Dependency Injection, you see the Dependency Injection dash platform dash specific dash services. This is better for SEO, right? So when the website is crawled, this is better. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm trying to make the names more explicit. That way, maybe it'd be... Uh, picked up better on the SEO side of things. Okay, so confirming navigation. 
controlling view lifetime. Uh, and navigation journal. That looks pretty good to me. I don't think I missed anything. View and view model participation. Oh, there it is right there. I need a... Uh, a spell check extension. Because I'm always just typing things. Had that one. See that? See that? Confirming navigation. Controlling uh, view lifetime. And this, actually, I have a couple of attributes. There's an attribute. Right? There's a there's an attribute here. Ugh. And there's the interface. I want to talk about those. <clears throat> Vinny, I've used C-Spell in the past for spell checking. Ooh, I need to check that out. Oh, Vinny Code. Hey, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. So I know I need to talk about the attributes and the region member lifetime while I'm in here. Confirming. This is just uh, I confirm navigation. Or I confirm that request. I don't even remember. I, I confirm request navigation. Ugh, I'm getting Xamarin Forms and WPF confused. Oh, wait, did I just spell that? Confirming. Okay, no, that's right. Okay. Navigating to existing views. Navigation journal. Passing parameters. Okay, view model, got that one. Got that one. I'm sure I misspelled something somewhere along the lines. Okay, now I need to take this TOC. Actually, I'm done with that one. Okay. Now, how many? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these. One, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. So what order do I have this? Basic region navigation. <clears throat> view slash view model. Participation. Uh, I'm not sure about this one, but maybe. Navigating. To Existing views. Passing parameters. Confirming navigation. Controlling. View lifetime. Navigated. Got twice. Navigated. Where? Where's... Huh? Navigating. Oh, oh. Thank you. Thank you. See, I have spell check. Detonated is my spell checker. <laughs> uh, and then navigation. Navigation journal. Okay, this is navigate right here. View view model participation. Passing parameters. Navigation journal. 
this is existing views. Controlling view lifetime. Confirming navigation. Basic region navigation. Man, we are making good progress. Okay. I'm actually going to save this notepad. Prism doc outline. Because I think I'm done with that. Where is GitHub? Added WPF topics. Write to master. Don't even care. Don't even care. Write to master. No branches, no PRs, no integration testing, none of that. We're just going to go for it. All right. Now we'll go back. I wonder if that website has been published yet. No, nope, not yet. I don't remember it taking that long. Yeah, control F5. All right. Well, I kind of want that up. <clears throat> because now, what time is it? Ooh, 11.42. Actually, I don't want to start writing the docs yet. I'm just going to start copying and pasting stuff out. Uh, well, there is one thing I can copy and paste out in 15 minutes. Uh, no. If you don't GitHub. There is... Where did I put that? Basically, the documentation for the dialogue service. Release notes. I put everything in the release notes. This was not that one. I think it was this one. New dialogue service for WPF. I think this is the one. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's do this one. I can basically copy and paste this. Let's edit. WPF, here we go. Here we go. Okay, I'm just gonna copy all this. <clears throat> and then I'll edit it. I'll just kinda modify it as I see fit. Cause there have been some changes. Uh, since this was first released. Copy. So this is dialogue service. Boom. Okay. Uh, and, you know, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what, okay. Yeah, I don't need all that. Let's have a collect higher bonus. To... See, this has changed, actually. Actually, I don't think I need this in here. I don't know if I need that in there. I probably need some type of intro. Create your dialogue view. Okay. Create your dialogue view model. Yep. Looks good to me. Register for the dialog. Using the dialog service. Simplify your application dialog APIs. 
register a custom dialogue window. Okay, I need to I need to expand this a bit. Register the uh, style the dialogue window. I don't need that note in there either. Okay, so here, actually, uh, I need to specify, because you can now, we just added, in the last stream, we just added the ability to register multiple dialog windows. Uh, you just have to provide a name for them. <clears throat> where? Style the dialog window. Again, spelling mistake. Where, 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 where? Oh! Good catch. Good catch. Okay. Uh, so now what we can do So if you have more than one dialogue window you would like to use as a dialogue host you can register the Oh my gosh, register multiple dialogue windows with the container by specifying, oh my gosh, I cannot type a name for the window. So then I could copy this. Uh, then we need a name. We need a name for this. Uh, I'll just say my other window. Or no, let's just give it a real type of name, like a real something you would see. My notification window or just notification window there all right so let me read this <clears throat> Register a custom dialogue window. It's very common to be using a third-party control vendor such as Infragistics. <laughs> uh, in these cases, you may want to replace the standard WF window control that hosts the dialogues with a custom window class such as the Infragistics AMP ribbon window control. In this case, just create your custom window and implement the I dialog window interface. My ribbon window? Yep, that's the same. Then register your dialog window with the I container registry. If you have more than one dialog window you would like to use as dialog host, you can register multiple dialogue windows with the container by specifying a name for the window. Okay, this is important. I forgot the syntax for a note. Dang it. I think it's this. Uh, where am I using notes? Where am I? I forgot the syntax for a note. Oh, I know where I uh. Right here. Commanding. Okay. Did I close that? Oh, don't tell me I closed that. I have a bad habit of like closing windows. What is the syntax for that? Oh, I was close. I was close. There we go. Note. Oh crap, what was I going to say now? Oh my gosh, I totally forgot what I was going to say. I had something important to note about this. Uh, crap! What was I going to say? Okay, that's frustrating. 
so I say how to, I, I, I'm a skip, it might come back to me. Uh, so you can register, you provide a name with the container registry, that's great. Go back in the VOD. FIFO, yep, FIFO, first in, first out. Uh, using the dialog service. Call show or show dialog, providing the name of the dialog, any parameters your dialog requires, and then handle the result back. Okay, I need to think about this because if, because this is the new feature, if you're using multiple dialog windows, oh, maybe that was going to say, in order to use a dialog window by name, you must provide the dialog window name in the idialog service dot show or oh hold on idialog service dot show or idialog dot show dialog method in and us instead of must <laughs> Yes, in order to use a dialog window by name, you must provide the dialog window name in the idialog service that show or idialog that show dialog method as follows. Let me copy this up here. Nope, not that one. This one. I don't need all this though. Like that. Dialog name. Dialog parameters. Dot, dot, dot. It's just an example, notify window. Okay, I hope that shows up. So basically what I'm just saying, if you're registering multiple windows and you're using a name in order to use that window when you show your dialog, you have to provide that name uh, when you show the dialog. I think that makes sense. I think that'll do it. So let me make sure this, okay, to do intro. Okay, I'll do the intro later. Create your dialogue view. Got it. Create your dialogue view model. Okay. Here's a simple example of what an iDialogue aware view model may look like. I even provide an example of what it might look like. Okay. Got it, got it, got it. Register the dialog. That's the next step. Yes, register dialog. Oh, wait a minute. Something else I didn't show. Uh, optionally, you can provide a custom name for your dialog. Like that. Okay. Oh, I guess that doesn't matter. Okay. So I register the dialog. To register the dialog, you must have a view and a corresponding view model, which implement iDialogware. Okay. Register your dialog like you would any other service using iContainerRegistry.register dialog method. Got it. Optionally, you can provide a custom name for your dialog, which I did here. Using the dialog service, this is how you use it. Okay, I'm going to move the simplify your application a dialog APIs to the end because this is not critical to the content. 
I want to stay focused on the content. So now you're registering the dialog, a custom dialog, styling the window. Now you can simplify your API uh, by using an extension method. And so what I might do here Notification window. If I can spell. Notification. <clears throat> there we go. So basically I'm showing, you know, if you're using the normal dialogue, uh, you're gonna say show dialogue, the name of the dialogue, you're gonna pass in some parameters, you'll have a callback, right? Uh, but if you're using a custom window, you'll also have to provide the name of the window. Well, in your real application, that might be kind of redundant, right? So you might want to simplify your APIs if you know what that window needs. In this case, we're saying a notification window just needs a message. So our new extension method will essentially extend the dialogue service and only request the string and then we'll have a callback. And so then I can determine what dialog I'm going to show, in this case, the notification dialog, what parameters I'm passing, in the case, this case, a message parameter, uh, and then the callback and what window I'm going to use. And so my calling code only has to worry about dialog service that show notification and pass the message and handle the callback. It doesn't have to worry about anything else. So I think that Topic is good to go. I can write an intro later. I don't know what the intro is going to say, but I can write an intro later. What I can say right now is that it's lunchtime. <laughs> it's time for me uh, to have lunch with my wife. So we will continue documenting on Thursday. Because as you can see, we have a ton of documentation to write. But, you know, it's not fun. It's not sexy. It's not cool. But it, it helps the community. And so somebody's got to do it. Might as well be me. I'll buckle down. I'll bear down. And I will take the hit for my community and do the work no one else wants to do so they can benefit. Right? Yes, Lily. Nom nom time. <laughs> Lunch with the wife, can't beat it. Take that back. Documentation is fun. <laughs> yeah, well, maybe, Lily, maybe I should walk you through writing some prism code so you kind of understand how it works and then you can help me write some documentation. <laughs> you know, honestly, a lot of it, a lot of it is going to be probably copy and paste, honestly. A lot of us can be copy and paste from the legacy, just some small modifications. Uh, so it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, and the build still hasn't finished yet. I'm going to look into that. Not sure why that's... Uh, no. uh, detonated. You want to see some prism examples? Well, have you gone to the GitHub repo? Clicked on Prism Library, so you're at the organization level. And uh, we have some samples for forms. Uh, in this case, WPF. We have like almost 30 samples. Oh, no, we do have 30 samples because some of these are numbered multiple times. Uh, so, yeah. So, we have a ton of samples for WPF. And if you're looking for samples for forms, we are currently working on those, but we also have a number of samples uh for xamarin forums as well so this is an effort that we are really focusing on right now because uh, we realize there is a lack in docs and samples and although no one it's not fun for me lily loves it lily i invite you to help <laughs> please, please help, please uh but if i don't do it now i'll never do it so i need to just buckle down and do it and also, I need to figure out... It should have finished already. I'm actually going to open up a different browser. 
Uh, cause this should have... Okay, something's going on because that should have finished by now. So I'll have to look at our builds for that. Something's up. Alright, where was I? Okay. That'd be awesome, Lily, if you could help. That'd be amazing. That'd be amazing. And like I said, most of it is going to come from this legacy here. So when we're talking about uh, navigation, for example. See this? When I talk about navigation, you can go down to view-based. Basic Reva navigation. Just copy and paste stuff. <laughs> easy. Easy, easy. <laughs> and then I'll come in here and modify and fix. But, uh... Twitter's always best, Lily, to get a hold of me. Twitter's always best for me. Okay. All right. I think that is time. That's my that's my cue. Thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, next time you see me, I'm gonna have a haircut. <laughs> and I'll probably shave a little bit because I am I am get getting pretty scraggly. Uh, and, and and maybe maybe next time we'll we'll start with DocFX. I'll show you how to install it. I'll show you how to build your own uh, docs locally uh, to get you started. Because if you if you're ever, ever curious uh, about a good documentation system, this is the one Microsoft uses. Uh, a lot of people use DocFX. You just don't know it's DocFX because they style it to make it look like their own. Uh, so I think we should go over docs a documentation system. Uh, next on Thursday. I think that'd be cool. We can install it, create some docs, generate it. It'd be all command line. Like it, it could be fun. No hair hype. <laughs> and yes, Morton, you're right. Oddly enough, DocFX is horribly poorly documented. It's crazy, but it's so awesome. The stuff you can do with it, like getting down to writing the, the custom parsers and everything like custom you can write your own custom markup tags. That, that's awesome. Okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining me today. I cannot wait to see you on Thursday. Have a good one, and I will see you next time.